In this episode, we thin some paint. I look at some plans. I spray a paint mill. I play with some tools. And I weather some wheels that will never be used. How's it everyone? This is Gordon from Akito Model Works and uh, today we're going to continue the Tamiya 148 scale HE219 that I started nearly a year ago and uh, yeah I'm just going to apologize about that. <laughs> Unfortunately some stuff happened in my life and uh, the mojo was um, very down or non-existent actually and uh yeah so we're just gonna catch up from where we left off and just pretend that none of that happened with this model i'm using the eduard t mask for the canopy and all that a t mask really is is that it uh, gives you a set of masks for the inside of the canopy and of course the usual outside of the canopy as well this allows you to spray the inside of the canopy the color of the cockpit like it's supposed to be and then of course it allows you to spray the outside frame the color of the fuselage or whatever color that needs to be as recommended by Eduard and uh, because of the complex curves especially on the inside of a canopy um, they do recommend that you use some masking liquid to fill in the gaps on the mask and that's exactly what i'm busy doing here i have found that it's quite difficult to remove or to clean your brush that you use um, when you're using mr hobby's masking liquid so therefore i prefer to just use a cheap disposable brush um, i think i bought a set off of amazon of like 100 or something and yeah after i've used that i basically just dispose of the brush i'd also like to mention that the piece of wire that you're seeing that's sticking out the side of the canopy there is a 0.2 millimeter lead wire that i installed inside the frame for the schrager musik gun sight that was on the inside of the canopy and unfortunately i don't have um, a recording of me installing that piece of wire so yeah sorry about that i just thought i'd mention the piece of wire that's sticking out there is actually supposed to be there Okay, on to the next stage, which is painting the inside of the canopy. As usual, I've got a stable base to put the canopy or the parts onto. In this case, it's a piece of uh, cut off acrylic from other projects that I've used. Um, and using some white tack, which is nearly the same as blue tack, or for us South Africans known as press tech. That's exactly what that is and uh, yeah when it comes to spraying the inside of the canopies i prefer to go uh, with really thin paint and a low pressure as well so that there's not too much paint build up on the edge of the mask um, which will leave a little ridge um, which in this case is going to be difficult to sand seeing that you're working on a transparent piece of plastic so just keep that in mind i usually go even thinner and even lower pressure when it comes to painting canopies okay on to the next step which is painting the outside of the canopy as you can see there you can clearly see the rlm 66 interior colors coming through on the inside of the canopy and now i'm spraying the rlm 76 on the outside very light coats, very thin paint, low pressure. Once again, like I mentioned earlier on, you don't want to be building up an edge or a ridge between the paint and the mask. 
on your beautifully painted canopy because you simply don't want to be sanding any of that, do you? Okay, on to the next step which involves removing the masking set so that it can unveil all that hard work you just did and I'm using a pair of Dumont Swiss very sharp tweezers to remove the masking set and they make light work of removing masks like this. Okay, next uh, little tip that I want to share is applying mask sets of like national insignias in this case onto a model using transfer tape. Now transfer tape is nothing more than transparent sticky tape, but it's got a low tackiness to it and so it removes your mask that you're trying to use and you transfer it from the mask masking backing sheet onto the kit or onto the surface that you would want to put your mask. Now a lot of people would say, why would you want to do that? Well, it's basically to improve the location of where you're putting your mask. Sounds very basic. But once you've struggled with this a couple of times, you will uh, realize that, um, yeah, it's kind of the only way to go. After cutting a sizable piece of transfer tape, you just have to put it over the insignia or whatever marking or whatever letter or number you're trying to transfer and just fuse it down with your finger or a tool like I'm using in this case so that it will actually lift the insignia as you can see yeah and then Bob's your uncle now it's time to transfer it to the kit okay so um, placing the the mask is a bit of a challenge and what I basically do is use the panel lines as a reference as to where the placement of the mask needs to be. I can't really think of another way of doing that, but if someone has some better idea of um, doing this, then please share that in the comments. After that, you just burnish down the transfer tape really well and remove it slowly usually at a very very sharp angle so that you don't lift the insignia once again and then you burnish down your mask Okay, and here's some proof of me being a lazy modeler. I do have a beautiful pair of Dumont Swiss tweezers. And because I'm just too lazy to reach over to my other desk to get it, I'm here yeah, struggling with a knife and scalpel blades. Laziness out the window eventually retrieved my um, tweezer and let's go this is always so satisfying me to satisfying for me to watch as you remove a mask and then get ready to paint it but luckily you don't have to watch all of that because uh, yeah using technology to speed that all up a bit once again this is nearly like spraying a canopy low pressure, thin paint, and we systematically build up the layers of paint so that once again, you don't build a ridge between your mask and your paint. 
Okay, next step is to paint the black part of the Balkan Kraus. Now to do this I decided to create some contrast between the black part of the fuselage and the black part of the Balkan Kraus. I'm using Tamiya's rubber black to do that and not only is it got a difference in color, it's got a difference or a slight difference in what can we call this shineability <laughs> the rubber black has got a slight little sheen to it in comparison to the other um, variants of black that I used or dark grays that I used on the side of the fuselage a small tip that I want to share once again is um, I remove the mask as soon as I can. As soon as it's viable to do it, I don't wait for the paint to completely cure for 24 hours or something. And that allows the paint to settle and therefore avoids that ridge that I'm talking about all the time or that I hate so much. now because of some really bad editing we're going back to the future where back to the future so for uh, reasons only known to myself um, i decided that i wanted to uh, just show some general assembly of the model and unfortunately like I said, because of bad editing, we're going back into the future. Thanks, Marty, for that. And <laughs> because, uh, yeah, these these parts that I'm, uh, the engine parts and the wings uh, were done, of course, were done before um, I painted the insignias on the fuselage. So apologies for that. I'm also going to uh, shut up now for a couple of seconds so that we can all enjoy the struggle of putting an engine cowl onto the kit because of the Eduard photo itch that is kind of in the way. Enjoy. <laughs> Look at that, I'm intelligent enough to put the cowl on eventually. I hope you guys enjoyed the struggle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get on to another step of the build. One of the things that um, I had a bit of a brain fart about was um, the wheels. Although um, most of the reference pictures that I looked at for the Uhu shows it with rather smooth wheels on there. And uh, I went to all the trouble to weather and paint and what have you, everything. Um, I just thought, I don't know, it just looked too smooth, too... I don't know what you want to call it. At the end of the day, I just decided to order the Eduard resin set that's got a thread on them and uh, yeah so this is for your enjoyment to see how I paint and weather wheels but um, yeah I didn't end up using them I um, like I said I used the um, Eduard resin set which by the way is an excellent set of um, wheels
Okay, let's move on to the next step, which involves the Eduard resin wheel set that I just mentioned. The first step, of course, is to remove the wheels from the casting support. Um, here I'm doing it with a saw blade on my Proxen tool. Of course, you don't have to have fancy pantsy rotary tools like that to remove um, anything. A regular modeling saw will do just as well. Um, the only thing that I do want to really mention and be serious about is the fact that resin dust is toxic and also a carcinogen. Um, me being a little friend and ex-patient of cancer, um, I don't play around when it comes to those kinds of things. Um, so please wear a mask, please wear some eye protection whenever you're working with resin. Of course, there's other options to work with resin. You can work in water with it or anything like that to avoid the dust. Next step, of course, is to paint the wheels, and I used Tamiya Rubber Black to accomplish this. While I had the Rubber Black out, I also decided to do some fading and some color contrasting on the wings, because that's one of the blacks that I did not use on the wing. Although, uh, I have to mention that the pressure is way down here, and the rubber black has been thinned to a much thinner consistency than painting the wheel, for example. The next step for my method of weathering wheels is to spray a light, very thin coat of deck tan all over the wheel to simulate dirt and dust and any accumulation of trash and dirt on the tires. Like I said, this is a very thin layer of deck tan and the ratio of paint to thinner here is probably close to 90% thinner and 10% paint. Once all that paint's been mixed and tested on the paint mill, I continue with, like I said, a very, very light coat of deck tan all around the outside of the tire. And seeing that we've been dealing with so many masks, I felt the need to put us all through some more punishment. And so the Eduard resin wheel set comes with its own little masking set, which fits just fine. And uh, yeah, like I said, I just thought uh, we all need some more pain um, in this episode of uh, this build. <laughs> Once the wheels had been masked, I uh, applied a very thin coat of uh, Tamiya Dark Iron for the actual rim of the wheel.
went ahead and applied some of MIG Ammo's undercarriage wash onto uh, mostly the tread area of the tire. After the wash was applied, I applied a very light coat of Aptilung Light Mud oil paint using the dry brush method. For those that don't know about the dry brush method, it is basically a very, very, guess what? Dry brush. that has barely got any of the oil paint on there. And with very, very light and fast strokes, you highlight certain parts of the wheel. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching this video and going through uh, all this pain with me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I really do enjoy doing this. Um, yeah, it's just part of my sense of humor. Um, once again, apologies for the amount of time it took to put out this episode. From now onwards, I will definitely try to be a bit more consistent. Now that I've kind of like settled down a bit. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next episode. And hopefully you guys learned something new or at least saw something that interested you. And uh, if you could consider subscribing to my channel and liking the videos, I would really appreciate that. See you soon.